we have discussed in general what does machine learning do and uh, what are typical machine learning problems. So in the next, let us take a specific and more formal view of those requirements of the problems. So for whatever object uh, or a process or some kind of scenarios, we would like to extract knowledge about, we would like to make future predictions. We can observe some attributes from the scenario, from the object or process, and we can identify some target to uh, predict. Machine learning is a problem to establish some functional relationship between those observable attributes and the uh, target of interest. So corresponding to the um, general discussion we had uh, previously about machine learning, uh, what does machine learning do? Uh, we have some basic ideas about um, those attributes and their relationship to the target. Uh, firstly, of course, those attributes are supposedly uh, to be related to the target. Mm, to be specific, for example, if the objects of interest are bank customers, and uh, um, put yourself in the boot in the banker's boots, and now the task is um, to predict whether a customer uh, will default in future or will be a viable customer. You can imagine for this target, attributes such as the current income and the debt ratio, or other factors such as age uh, or employment status would be relevant. On the other hand, some attributes such as a hair color uh, might not be quite useful. This said, it is not always black and white um, when it comes to decide whether a property, whether an attribute is useful for predict a particular target at the beginning, at the uh, exploratory stage of the problem. Traditionally, the choice is very much about um, the expertise or experience about both the analytic problem and uh, um, the machine learning tools you are willing to use. Uh, fortunately, the recent development of modern machine learning techniques are encouraging so-called end-to-end learning, which encourages the engineers to adopt uh, inclusive sets of uh, uh, attributes, which means um, you can afford to include as many um, attributes as you uh, might consider to be useful. And later, let the learning model or learning algorithm during the learning process to automatically determine uh, which attributes are mostly useful for the, um, uh, for the prediction task and automatically suppress those not so useful attributes. The second essential prerequisites of applying machine learning methods is that um, you should observe data about the attributes and the target. And the observability refers to uh, twofold meanings here. You may have already heard terms such as training and test stage, stages of a data model which refers to two stages of a life circle of a data model. These two stages are distinguishable mainly according to the availability of two sets of interesting quantities in the problems, uh, which we often refer to variables. For one set, they are the attributes, which are available both in training and in test stage. The other variable is the target, which is uh, only available in the training stage. This makes sense because during training, 
you know both the uh, attributes using which you are going to make predictions and you also know the correct answer of those predictions so that you can train your model. And in the test stage, or alternatively we can call when your model has been put in deployment, the only available quantities are those attributes and the model will use those attributes to make predictions uh, for which we do not know the correct answer and that is the, um, the initial motivation we built the model in the first place. Uh, it is relatively straightforward to understand that we must have data samples uh, to build a data model. For the second part, we emphasize that those attributes uh, on which the data model um, is, uh, is performing its computation and make the prediction must be observable in both the training and the test, the test stages. We can consider the previous example uh, that we observe some status of uh, bank customers and the target of the prediction is uh, the financial status of the customer after a period of time, say five years. Uh, attributes such as age, debt, or employment are viable, uh, are useful attributes because in both the historical data and um, for any new customer, those attributes are all observable. Consider, for example, uh, a hypothetical attributes. See, uh, when you get the customer, this uh, attribute describe the, um, the customer's future income, uh, for example, in five years, will be uh, significantly uh, greater or less than his or her debt. This attribute is, uh, you can imagine, it's hugely useful in predicting whether the customer will default or not. But the only problem is that when a new customer comes, this attribute won't be observable. It won't be available until the time the prediction is needed. And uh, so in practice, it's not hugely useful to make uh, uh, customer prediction models using uh, attributes like this. In other words, it's just a loopy tautology. Just, uh, you, you just describe the problem in other words. You cannot solve the problem using this kind of information. Lastly, as we have discussed, it probably won't be a good idea to build a um, statistical data model for relationships that are analytical. For example, if you know two edges, the length of two edges of, um, uh, well, a triangular, that the two edges are perpendicular to each other. So it is unnecessary to use machine learning techniques uh, to give you a function that can calculate the area of the triangle um, by uh, the input of the length of two edges. Here is our famous hello world example in data science. Um, the iris flower classification problem. The input of the problem uh, are four attributes of a flower, the dimensions of sample and the dimensions of petal of a flower. And the target of the classification is the class, uh, the species specific species of this iris flower. The flower classification is a typical machine learning problem. You have four attributes that is obviously related to the species of the flower, and those attributes are observable. For example, if you take a walk in the nature uh, and encounter, uh, find uh, an iris flower, obviously you can mirror the dimensions of this flower and use this measurement to predict, um, to, ask, to have a guess of uh, what the species of this iris flower. 
And obviously, it is difficult to build an uh, analytical function uh, to calculate the flower species from the four attributes. So in summary, the task is to build from data a function that accepts four real value inputs and output a categorical uh, prediction. I want to remind that by changing the format, the formulation of the input and that of the output, this general task, this general framework can cover a much richer range of real world applications, such as uh, natural language processing, understanding translation, or image processing, uh, video processing, so on and so forth. Actually, this kind of data models are the underlying engine of almost all modern artificial intelligent applications. Let's consider the learning from data problem more specifically. With a bit attention uh, paid to the mathematical symbols we use to denote different concepts in discussing uh, in our discussion in this problem. Usually we use the letter X to denote those input attributes that we use to predict the target, which is denoted by letter Y. So here in the flower classification problem, uh, we have 150 data samples. Each of the sample has four attributes. It is often the case when we discuss the relationship between the attributes and the target, we will denote each attrib different attributes using subscripts on the uh, mathematical sample. So we have x1, x2, x3, x4. But we must keep in mind that those are variables. They can take different values on different data samples. So we also introduce a superscript to denote different data samples. We put a pair of parentheses to emphasize um, this script, uh, scripting number numbering um, has a different meaning than when we use subscript to, to denote different uh, attributes. Therefore, the superscript goes from 1 to the number of data samples, which is 150 in this case. It is also very important to remark that the task is to build a function or a mapping from the entire x space to the target value. So f must be defined on all possible combinations of the values uh, of x1 to x4, rather than only on the 150 training examples. For this reason, in literature, the variables are often denoted using capital letters, which is to emphasize the fact that um, those variables refer to generic values, not only the values you have observed. So you can take any um, uh, legal value of uh, um, the defining space of those attributes or the target. 